friends, welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing great. So since I've started uploading YouTube videos, all my friends and everyone I know have been asking me to upload a simple step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create any eyeshadow look. So as you can tell, this is going to be my first video with my new Christmas setup. So I thought this would be a great time to give you guys this tutorial because going into December, I'm going to be uploading four makeup tutorials. So the first three weeks are going to be Christmas, 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 and then the last one is going to be a New Year's Eve glam look. So I figured that this was going to be a great time to upload a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to achieve any eyeshadow look because you can use this if you want to recreate any of the looks that I'm going to be doing in December. So breaking this tutorial down, you can achieve this look with seven easy steps. So I'm going to be showing you each and every step as we go along and then you can just pause this video as you recreate the looks. Ever since getting Penguin, I have so much hair all over. It's always on my brushes. The steps are primer, a transition shade, a darker crease shade, a shimmer shade, liner, mascara, and inner corner highlight. So if you put all of these steps together in the order that I'm going to show you, you'll create a very easy, very simple eye look. And then the more you get comfortable with this, the more you can add in more transition shades, more crease colors, uh, more graphic liners more aggressive liners. Now, if you wanna skip any of these steps, you're more than welcome to, and it'll just make it even easier. So just build your way up, because Lord knows that I did not start off doing all of these. I have been practicing for quite a while now, so just keep practicing everything that I'm gonna show you, and I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. So the most important thing when creating an eyeshadow look is brushes. Now, I ha do have quite a bit of brushes because I'm obsessed with them. And I every time I see one, I just wanna buy another one. But this look can be created with only four brushes. So if you're gonna get any brushes, these are the types of brushes that I would recommend. Now, I do love the Morphe brushes. They're very affordable, very cheap. Um, but other than that, I just buy my brushes from anywhere, usually from Winners. Um, they have great brush sets, especially around Christmas. They have a lot of great brush sets. So what you're gonna need is one fluffy brush, like this one. So this is gonna be really good for your crease shade, as well as just blending everything Everything together at the very end so that everything comes together seamlessly so just one big fluffy brush one smaller more tapered brush so you can see how this one still has some bendability to it can you see all the makeup flying out of there so this one still has some blendability to it this is the morphe m321 and this one was the morphe m441 so this one is just better, more detailed, so that you can really pack the darker color in here so that you can buff that darker shade in and create more of a seamless blend. Next, I've got a small eyeshadow brush. So this is the Sonia Kashuk aptly named small eyeshadow brush. So it's a small paddle brush. Now, any paddle brush will work. I do like this one though because I like to use it also for my inner corners and it's just again a little bit fluffy i don't really like anything too too dense when it comes to eyeshadow because i like to have more of a blown out completely blended together look so i just use that for packing color on my lid and in my inner corner right there and next is a liner brush now i don't love this one but i can't seem to find one that exactly fits the needs that i want so i'm gonna be going to morphe soon to try and find one that they have but this is the elf professional eyeliner brush and you can tell it's just a flat topped liner brush. So what I like this for is buffing out a pencil liner on my top lash line so that it looks less defined, more natural, or you can use it for eyeshadow as well if you don't want such a harsh line as a pencil liner, and as well as buffing it out down on the bottom line. So it keeps it pretty concentrated without throwing it everywhere, but it still blends pretty nicely. I'm trying to smile more in these videos because I feel like I always look mean. Okay, so if you have these four brushes or ones that look very similar to them or are kind of similar to them at all, then you're going to be able to achieve this eye look and any eye look following after this. So the steps that I'm showing you can be used for any shades, any colors, any type of eye look that you want. You can change the shape more, you can add more darkness, add more lightness. So 
step number one of seven is eyeshadow primer. Now, now I've talked about this before in my previous videos, but I am a firm believer that eyeshadow primer works. Some people think that concealer and eyeshadow primer are interchangeable. It's really not. Um, I will link a video that Robert Welsh here on YouTube did explaining the differences. So basically what I get from his videos is that concealer is meant to hydrate your under eyes because under eyes do get very dehydrated. So if you put it on your lids, it's going to be more slippery and more slidey and your eyeshadow is not going to appear as pigmented and it's not going to last as long as if you were to use an eyeshadow primer. So eyeshadow primers are meant to be a barrier between your eyelids and your eyeshadow so that the natural oils from your eyelid don't push through and start to break down your eyeshadow. I hope I explained that properly. I'm going to link his video down in the description box below so that you can go watch it if you are interested in learning the differences. But yeah, I always use an eyeshadow primer. Right now it's the Too Faced Shadow Insurance Primer. So I just take a small pea-sized amount on my finger. Less is more when it comes to primer because you don't want to put too much on your lids because it'll be slippery and slidey all over the place. So I'm going to be using the Beauty Bay Evolve palette today. So I love this eyeshadow palette, especially for beginners, because it can create an entire eyeshadow look top to finish thoughtlessly. So you've got your base, your transition, your crease, your liner, pop of color, and your highlight shade, and it's all in one palette. So you can use this as a base while you're trying to learn how to layer shadows to create a blended seamless look. Now blending does take quite a bit of time, so just be patient with yourself while you try and learn how to do it properly. So I'm going to be using maybe this first row. Let's use the first row. It's the closest to me and it matches my lipstick. So I'm just going to go in with this shade here named Transition. Now you can tell it's the lightest shade out of all of them. So after the base shade, of course, which I didn't use. So I'm going to be going in with this one here and just take a little bit on my brush and tap off the excess. You can find your crease there, right where your eyeball and your eye socket meet. You can just use your finger and then just put your brush right there where you feel it and start to blend. You can use little circular motions or you can use back and forth windshield washer motions. Now, in order to not press too hard, hold your brush at the end so that it's floopy floopy. That's the technical term, floopy floopy. So if you hold it here, it's not gonna be as dense and hard to blend out. Whereas if I put it here, it's applying so much product and so much pressure that it's gonna be even harder to blend out. So hold it farther down, take some shadow, and just let the brush do the work. The brushes want to blend. That's all you have to say. The brushes want to blend. So again, we're just putting it in that crease and blending, blending. Now you can bring it up as high as you want up to the brow bone. Now I like to bring it pretty high up towards the brow bone because I do have pretty small eyes so I find that it helps widen them. And again, you can just take a little bit at a time and reach back in. So it's always easier to control when you just take a little bit at a time. And I'm going to try and not speed up this video too much so that you can see kind of real time what it looks like to blend and kind of how long it does take. And once again, I kind of just flip flop be between little circles and back and forth motions. Okay, so once you're happy with your transition shade, you can move in with your smaller, more dense brush. So next we're going to be moving down to the crease line, which is this one here. So you can tell it's just a little bit darker than the transition line. So building an eyeshadow look is just trying to create a gradient. So you want to have the lightest shadow colors out here, moving down into the darkest shadows. So I'm just going to take this here on my brush a little bit, again, tapping off and applying it right into where the crease is, so where your eyeball actually meets your brow bone. And I'm just going to tap and put it there. Tap where you want the most pigment, tap, 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 and then I can blend out. Now, for this, I do mostly use windshield washer motions, and I just kind of blend back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now, I tend to do my eyeshadow a lot with my eyes open because I want to be able to see what I'm going to be seeing while my eyes are open because you don't walk around all day like this 
right? So it doesn't really make much sense to be doing your eyeshadows with your eyes closed. So you want to be able to see what you're going to be looking like as you walk around. I try and put my mirror right in front of me and look at your mirror eye level and with your eyes open, resting how they normally are, just put the shadow where you would like it to look. So again, going with that crease, following your crease, blending back and forth, back and forth. Now it doesn't matter if this blend is a little bit rough because we're going to be going in with that first fluffy shade again and blending it all together. So I'm putting it mostly in my outer V which is just up and along this lash line here. So this whole kind of outer triangle area of your eye is where you want it to be the deepest. So again just taking a little bit more, again tapping the dark color first and then blending it up keeping it in that crease. Okay, so it's kind of like a rough blend there. So taking just a little bit more of that darker shade on my same brush, I'm just gonna be putting it on that outer corner of my lid. So not in my crease anymore, just actually on my lid. And then just blending it back and forth just pressing really lightly it's much easier to blend if you press lighter misconception people always think you have to push really really hard to blend it back and forth but it's actually much easier if you just let the brushes do the do the work themselves so once we've got this aforementioned rough blend I'm gonna be going back in with my fluffy brush and blend them together yeah so you just go right on the crease again and blend them together. And the great thing about it is using that same brush that you used before, it's got some of the lighter color on it that's gonna help to blend it together. So that is just the two shades blended together and you can see here that it is a gradient. So next I'm gonna be moving in with the pop of color section so usually for me that is a shimmer shade I love shimmers I always have I love glitter sparkles glam anything like that but you can also do this with a matte shade if you want you can run a matte shade all over your lid it doesn't always have to be glitter but typically people use shimmers because it makes their eyes pop out so I'm just gonna go in with that shade here on my Sony Kashuk small eyeshadow brush. Now you can also do this with your finger, you don't even really need this brush. Most of the time that I'm applying my base color shadow, my pop of color shadow, I apply it with my finger and then use this to blend it out. So we're just gonna put that everywhere that the transition and the crease color are not. And then you can just use the edge of that brush to run it along the edge of the shimmer shade just to try and blend it out a little bit and you're just going to blend it into that outer corner dark shade right there okay so i'm just going to use that same brush for my highlight i'm going to use my color switch here my veramona color switch but honestly you could just use a paper towel you could just do this a bunch and flick it off that's just kind of bad for your brushes but so next I'm gonna go in with my inner corner highlight now for that you want to use a brightening shade so as you can tell in this bottom row it's all very bright very highlighting types of shades so you just want that because it's gonna open up your eyes a little bit more so going in with that first shade just a little bit on the tip of my brush and just applying it right on the inside a little bit up my nose and just blending it a little bit into that burgundy shade. Okay, so to finish off your eyeshadow look, you can do a liner. Now, you don't have to do liner. I didn't do eyeliner for most of my life, and most of the time I still don't do eyeliner because in my mind it takes away from all the hard work that I just did on my eyeshadow because especially if you use a liquid liner, it covers it all up. And I'm like, what did I just spend all that time blending for? So you can either use a liquid liner which is pretty difficult and I only just learned how to do in month three of quarantine. What was that? May? June? June. I taught myself how to do a flick with a liquid liner. So before that I lived my entire life without any, what are those called? Wings. Never used wings. So what I did use because it was much easier was a pencil liner. So this here is just the NYX slide on glide on stay on 
So if you don't want something this dark also, you could just run in with a shadow. So this line here is the liner line. It's just any of these colors, again, dark, and you can just press it with the liner brush that we talked about earlier. You can just press it with this liner brush right along the lash line. But today I am gonna use my pencil liner. And again, just run it close to the upper lash line and then I'm gonna blend it out with that brush. Just run it within my lashes because I don't want something super defined. This is much easier to do when I don't have to hold the mirror. Okay, so once I have that extremely, extremely rough application there, I'm just gonna take my e.l.f. Professional Eyeliner Brush that we looked at earlier and smudge it out so that it's a little more messy, a little less defined. And I'm just running that along my lash line. Okay, so there you go. You can just see it added just a little bit more definition. So if you do something like this also, it really helps with the mascara because then when you put it on, it makes your lashes look more full because you can't see the base of your skin. under. Okay, so the last step to creating your foolproof eyeshadow look is mascara. So I'm using the Bad Gal Bang mascara right now. And you could curl your lashes if you want. I hate curling my lashes because I get scared of the torture device. So I'm just going to go straight in with my mascara. Now I just put it on, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Now you don't want to pump, 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 pump your mascara because it'll dry it out really fast. Again, I just put it on and I wiggle, 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 wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. You can do your bottom lashes. Put it on, wiggle, 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 wiggle. Oh my god, this mascara is getting everywhere! So this is a great teaching moment now that I got mascara all over my face. If you do get mascara all over your face, I know you're going to want to take it off right away because I don't want that on my face either, but just let it dry fully and then it just scratch it off. It comes off so quickly you just have to flick it off and it'll come off so easily it doesn't mess up your makeup underneath so I'm gonna wait for this little this little egg to dry and these little eggs to dry and then we will come back okay so that is the eyeshadow look done it was super easy super simple took four brushes maximum a couple of them you could probably even kick out just don't kick out the two blending brushes these are the two most important ones you can use your fingers for fingers you can use your fingers for your pop of color as well as your highlight if you wanted to but you can't really blend too much without these brushes I mean you can use your fingers I did a no brushes makeup challenge I'll have that link down below it was super fun but I did my whole eyeshadow without using any brushes so you could technically blend your eyeshadow without any brushes but this is way easier just go with this so again I use these and just to it's safe so just again to run through the se seven steps so first step primer second step a light transition shade third step a darker crease shade fourth step a pop of color it can be a shimmer or it can be a matte shade fifth step is highlight and then seven no six can we count today Sixth step is gonna be the liner. You can, you can either use liquid, pencil, or a dark shade of eyeshadow, or none if you don't want to. And mascara. Seven. So seven steps to create any simple eyeshadow look. Now, I know this one does have it all laid out really nice and easy for you. So I'm gonna show you a couple of my other palettes because not everyone has a beginner palette like this. So this is my ColourPop Give It To Me Straight palette. And again, it is more of a neutral palette, but this is another really great one for this type of thing. So here we have that base shade that we didn't use today. Here we have a transition shade. We have one, two, three, four neutral shades for a crease shade that you can use, as well as one colorful shade that you could use for your crease shade. And then we have five pops of shimmer here. So if you wanted, you could put this one all over your lid or you could use it as your highlight shade and then put one of these on the lid. So any palette like this one that has multiple crease shades as well as a couple of shimmery highlighting slash pop of color shades is really good palette. So another example of an eyeshadow palette that has a similar setup as that is the Tarte Tartlet in Bloom palette. Now this one again, it's got a couple of base shades that you could use that we didn't use. It's got a couple of more transition shades. 
and then it's got one, two, three, four darker shades there that you could use in your crease, as well as one, two, three shimmery shades that you could use all over, and then going back in with this first shade here as your inner corner highlight. So just to show you something with a little bit more color, because all I've been showing you is neutrals, because that's really the one thing that I do. I've got the Morphe X James Charles palette here, and you can tell it's got a lot of color, but the great thing about this is that it's got a lot of colors in the same color palette. So we've got purples, pinks down here, blues, kind of greens and yellows, and more warm tone colors up here. So say you wanted to do a pink eyeshadow look, right? You could use this one as your transition shade, and this one as your crease shade. Same with the greens here. We have a lighter, we have a darker a lighter and a darker or a lighter and a darker so you can see with this there's so many different options when it comes to creating an eyeshadow look so i believe in you believe in yourself you are golden so i hope this video was helpful for you and that you can use it going into december and forward to recreate some of my upcoming christmas holiday inspired looks as well as my new year's eve glam look this is going to be a great template to try and recreate those um if I make them a little bit harder, just simplify them a little bit using only these steps and the same brushes you can use for any of that. So it's gonna be super, super fun. I'm really excited to go into the Christmas season and get started on my Christmas looks. So if you like that video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button down below as well as subscribe if you wanna see a new video every Sunday and click the little bell icon right next to the subscribe button if you wanna be notified whenever I post. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a great day, bye.